welcome to Faith Lutheran History Church on this nice warmer day. It's above zero. That's a good thing. I know all you people who are watching this from warmer climates are going, well, could be here. Suck. That's all right. Kills all the mosquitoes. So we're going to go with it good as well as we can. And here we are, the first Sunday in Lent at our Ash Wednesday service. The number of people here now was great. Hoping to see everybody back again this Wednesday because we'll be continuing our Lent Wednesday services up through almost the end of March. Uh, as you can see up in the dates up here, uh, come join us for Midweek Recharge at 7 p.m. Right now, it might possibly change. We'll, we'll talk about, we're going to talk about that this Wednesday. Holy Week. During Holy Week, we'll do Palm Sunday at 9 a.m. I've already got the palms ordered. They will be here for that. And then we'll have our Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Then our Easter Sunday service at 9 a.m. And we usually have, for our Easter Sunday service, of course, our, our uh, cross up here, which is filled with some beautiful lilies. Now, with that, we need to fill that cross with some lilies. And it just so happens that we have a sign up downstairs for lilies. If you would like to order one yourselves and have it in memorandum for someone, the sign up's downstairs, $10 each for those lilies. Uh, as more announcements come, for uh, Holy Week and Wednesday and such, I'll let you know as things go. Uh, that kind of concludes all my announcements for today. Caleb's going to bring us into the presence of the Lord with some music, and then we'll go into our first hymn, working out of the green hymnal today.
our opening hymn for today is Save You When in Dust to You. Again, working out of the green hymnal, number 91. Please rise as you are able.
most merciful God, we confess that we are in our sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we can be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his, and his, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of Lutheran congregations and mission for Christ, and by God's authority, and the, authority of you, the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend Gracious Lord, Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, who thus set us free.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson is from the 22nd chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through 18. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied. Here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told his servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked to, on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered. And they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not, turn, do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants upon number like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed all because you have obeyed me. Here is the reading. The Psalms is Psalms 25, verses 1 through 10, on page 226 of the Green Hymnal, or if you prefer to look at the screen. Uh, I will read the odd if you would respond with the even, please. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. The second lesson is from the first chapter of James, verses 12 through 18. God blesses those who potentially endure testing and temptation, or patiently endure testing and temptation, 
Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth <coughs> to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give us birth, birth to us by giving us his true word, and we out of all creation became his prized possession. Here ends the reading. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved Son, and you bring me great joy. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals, and angels took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I don't know about you, but one of the hardest things, for me anyways, is to wait for a red light and a stoplight when there's no one else on the road. You, can, you all know what I'm talking about. We, we come up to a stoplight, glowing red, and we obediently come to a stop. It's what we've been taught to do. And then we sit and wait, just like we're supposed to. We don't want to wait, but we do because that's what the law says. There's a lot of waiting in Lent. And today is the first Sunday in Lent. Now, our gospel text for today has the Apostle Mark telling us to prepare the way for the Lord's coming. And that's really what Lent is all about. A spiritual preparation to get our hearts and our minds ready for the celebration of Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. Now, normally I would use this passage from Mark's Gospel to talk about the tantalizing teasers of temptations in our lives. However, today we're actually going to be taking a look at the psalm reading Marianne wrote earlier from Psalm 25. So instead of Tiptoeing into temptation, we are going to be uh, waiting into waiting for the first Sunday in Lent. And specifically, we're going to take a look at waiting on the Lord. Now, the Bible through Psalm 25 wants us to learn some lessons in the uh, art of waiting. And this isn't a passive waiting where we just stop and, and wait for the light to turn green so that we can go again. The kind of waiting the Bible is telling us to do in Psalm 25 is an active kind of waiting that becomes a time of learning, discernment, and spiritual growth. Now, of course, our songwriter didn't have to wait at stoplights or people in front of him at the grocery store at that time. 
and he didn't have to wait for service at a fast food restaurant during peak time. However, the writer of Psalm 25 did live in a world that has one aspect which is the same as ours today. He lived in a world that was under the curse of sin. He lived in a world that was out of balance, very confusing, chaotic, and dangerous. The belief is that Psalm 25 was written by King David during a very dark time in the history of Israel. Psalm 25 is a psalm of prayer, penitence, trust, and waiting. It's a psalm that reminds us that while we wait on the Lord, there are some active things that we can be doing. I love the psalms, especially when they speak of the ups and downs of the events that were going on in King David's life. And that's because King David had the type of personality that would, he'd be going like crazy, stop for a while, get into trouble, come to his senses, repent, and then start again on the straight and narrow. Kind of sounds like our life sometimes, doesn't it? David is one of the great people in the Bible. And yet, David was also very human with a great deal of brokenness and human frailty. So David is someone that we can learn a great deal from if we want to not only avoid some pitfalls, but also learn how to get out of that pit as well. Today we're going to focus on verses 4 through 5 of Psalm 25. And we're going to see how David gives us some active things that we can do while we wait on the Lord. For some, perhaps, the season of Lent is like waiting at a red stoplight when no other car is around. It doesn't make any sense and, and can become way too frustrating. So why do we have this season in which we are to stop, wait, reflect, discover, think, meditate, do some divine detoxing, reformulate good habits, add good ones, and all that stuff? Why don't we just continue on going through that green light after green light after green light until we come to Easter Sunday? Well, because, like David, there's times when we do need to slow down, stop, and wait. We need to take the time to wait and understand that someone greater than us is in control. And we need to take that time for divine revelation, teaching, and direction instead of merely relying on our own faulty human wisdom. So, let's dig into Psalm 25, this first Sunday in Lent, and see how we can prepare ourselves for waiting. First advantage of waiting on the Lord is that waiting brings revelation. Now, David fully understands that the Lord doesn't want us to simply zone out while we wait for someone or something to spark us to life. Verse 4 says this, Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. David pleads to God to show me and to point out the road to me because he understands that he has strayed off the straight and narrow path. At that time, things all around King David were in total chaos. One of his own sons had not only rebelled against him, but was now hunting him down to kill him and take his crown. So David knows that he either missed or, or ignored some of God's stoplight signals. He knows that had he taken the time to wait for and then listen to God, then the Lord would have been able to save him from all this trouble. How many of us 
struck out on our own without spending the necessary quality time with the Lord and then found ourselves in a mess. How many of us thought we knew everything and although we had a counsel of a few friends, we didn't take the time to wait on God's answer and as a result, we didn't make the best of decisions. So David, after his after his realizing his mistake, asks the Lord to show and point out the direction that he should now go. I could just picture David lying flat on the floor, face down, as he prepares to write these next words in verse 5. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. And you can bet that, that right at that moment, he was going to wait at that red light and wait for God to answer no matter how long it took. And that's the tough part, isn't it? Waiting on God at times seems like the longest red light in the world. We think we're ready and ready to go now. And yet the Bible, the Bible reminds us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verses 2 through 3, People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. And the only way we can ever know what God wants us to do is to spend some quality time with the Lord in prayer and in His Holy Word. We need, we need to learn how to wait so we can hear God's whispers. We need to wait on what we have read in the Bible and meditate upon it so that we can hear the leading of the Holy Spirit because it truly is all about waiting on the Lord which is going to bring us any kind of divine revelation. First advantage, waiting brings revelation. The second advantage to waiting on the Lord is that waiting brings growth. In verse 4, King David asks the Lord to point out the direction David needs to go. Now that phrase comes from the Hebrew word lamad, which means to teach so as to learn. For God's people, lamad was not something that was set aside for the very young. The Hebrew people believed that it was impossible to cram everything one needs to know in just a few years, and that it was foolishness to think that in a matter of 10 to 20 years that a person can learn all they need to know about God for the rest of their lives. The Hebrew people believed with all their hearts that a true learning takes a lifetime. In fact, they believed that the best teaching and learning happens during one's more mature years. That's why they truly believe a person never quits learning about God or receiving God's revelation and insights. So, we can know that waiting on the Lord can lead us to experience new revelations. Also, waiting on the Lord can lead us to a lifelong adventure of learning and being transformed by God's Holy Spirit. Our season of Lent can be a time of waiting on God that can develop us into better disciples of following His one and only Son by the power of His Holy Spirit. Lent can be a time for us to be able to dedicate some quality time to Read, study, pray, meditate, celebrate, and enjoy those times of silence, solitude, and simplicity. Lent can also be a time for us to refresh and renew our commitment and to expand our knowledge and relationship with our Lord and Savior. So that's the second advantage. Waiting brings growth. Now the third advantage of waiting on the Lord is that in waiting makes a faithful follower. 
King David knew who to follow. And David starts verse 5 with the words, Lead me by your truth. Now that word lead comes from the Hebrew word darach, which means to march. The word has a military context, which says to command with marching orders. David was so done with himself doing the leading in his life at this point. So in full humility, David gives up complete control and becomes a more faithful follower of God. And David would let God control his life and would walk with God along the paths of life when, where God was leading. And this is why we are called to have an active time of waiting rather than passive. Just like King David, we are waiting on the Lord for him to say, go. And then, during this time, making ourselves ready to go. This time of an act of waiting on the Lord involves being emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually ready to walk with God as he journeys with us in our lives. This act of waiting means that, that we are to be a faithful follower which follows God as he leads our paths. Sometimes up to the mountaintops and sometimes through the valleys. And it all starts with waiting. Waiting with anticipation and expectation that God will reveal himself to us. And we actively wait by working on growing in grace, mercy, and love so as to mentally and spiritually be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the loving patience you have for each one of us. Lord, we are sorry when we waste our waiting time by complaining about the wait rather than using that time to get closer to you. Help us, Lord, during the season of Lent to be the faithful followers you have called each of us to be by waiting for your revelations and to strive towards a faith-filled growth. And we pray this in the holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is uh, Were You There? Still working out of the green hymnal number 91. 91.
Lord, help us in our journey during Lent here, not only on Sundays, but on Wednesdays too, and, and all during the week, Lord, as we journey through this time of Lent, preparing our hearts and minds for your coming once again. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, thank you that you are the God of healing. Thank you, Lord, that we there's a number of miracles walking within our congregation that are God, give our thanks and glory to you, Lord, for that healing. Lord God, we ask you to come down now to, to bring your Holy Spirit to touch all of those people who are in our hearts and minds at this time of who is in need of your healing touch, whether that's in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for healing of this nation, Lord. And we know that that can only happen through you, Lord. Uh, we've been split up and messed up in so many ways, Lord. We're just asking you to, to come down to our, our hearts individually because that's where it's going to start, Lord. So help us start that mending process within our own selves, within our own relationships, within our families, and within our neighborhood, Lord. It is through that, Lord, that we can begin this healing process within the nation, Lord. We ask for your intercession on all the decisions that are made for this nation, from our president all the way down to our city councils. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the soldiers who protect us, who are putting their lives on the line for us, far away from family and friends. Father God, protect them. Keep them safe while they're out on their own missions. Bring them back, Lord, reunite them with the families. And then remind us as a nation, we've got to stand by them as they stood by for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we also pray for all those people putting their lives on the line in our own communities. Fire department, ambulance, law enforcement personnel, hospital personnel, Lord. They're, they're being on the front lines, Lord. We just ask you to protect them on their shifts. Keep them safe from any kind of germs, but also any other kind of physical uh, problems that may cause injury. Lord, every time we hear a siren, Lord, remind us we've got to pray for the responding officers and the situation. Lord, protect them. Keep them safe, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. 
But God, we also pray for all those soldiers fighting on the front lines for your gospel truth, all those missionaries that we support individually as a congregation. Father God, protect them, keep them safe, Lord, as they go about proclaiming your, your truth through your gospel. Lord, we ask you to protect their health, and we also ask you to protect them spiritually from any of the darts Satan wants to throw at them. Protect them on their travels, Lord, and Father God, please provide them with the resources they need to do those ministries you have called them to. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they'd like to make at this time, please go ahead and say them. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We'll continue uh, taking our offering in a basket that's uh, on the chair in back there. And uh, we ask you to give from your grateful and gracious hearts. Anyone who's watching us online, address is on the screen. And we also ask that you can give from grateful hearts to help us in our ministries here in Eau Claire and to the ends of the earth. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belong to the children of God. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Let us pray together the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Celebrate communion today by giving you a, I'll 
wafer, which you can then swallow. We have a gluten-free wafer in the white dish in the middle of the plate. We have a choice between white grape juice and wine in individual cups for your choice as well. All who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are welcome to his table. Come, his table is ready. Mm -hmm. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and give you His everlasting strength, peace, and protection. In the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is My Song is Love Unknown, number 94, 94 in the Green Hymnal. Just going to do verses 1 through 4.
abilities to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.